I was so scared. For me, it's just like post office or authorities like a mafia. It's one of the biggest miscarriages of justice in British history, and its appalling human consequences are still being felt. I was so much down and out. At one stage, I was contemplating suicide. Hundreds of innocent lives continue to be tormented by what they went through and by the lack of accountability. The stresses, the feelings, the flashbacks, the dreams, the nightmares. Janet Skinner had to learn to walk again after a spinal infection paralysed her in 2008. She holds the post office responsible, certain it was stress-induced. I can't work. Can't, I can't, but these days, I like I had a day like that yesterday, to be honest, but these days that I just can't get out of bed. I can't get up, or I can't stand up. The problem with me is, is I've, got, like, I've got this for life. The memories that, that I've had, they're not just going to be erased. Do you know, they'll never ever go away. They will always be there. I've got a life sentence for this. Janet was one of those sent to prison for a crime she didn't commit because of a fault in her post office computer. She was convicted of false accounting at her branch in Hull. At the time, her children were 17 and 14. During her three months behind bars, she didn't see them. It was a memory I didn't want to have. So it was a memory that I knew I didn't want them to have. Um, I didn't speak to them. I didn't write to them. I was always there for both of them. And um, I, never, I never went anywhere and I never did anything without them. But, I mean, Matthew didn't really. He didn't take it easy, easy, easy either, but it only took it the hardest. How did it affect her? This is why we don't talk about it, because we just can't, because we just... We just can't be open and talk, openly talk about it. Right, this here, where the white board is with the cash point, the branch where Janet worked no longer exists, but the pain she associates with it will never disappear. Everybody knows everybody. Chinese whispers. And then obviously because of what was publicised, I didn't want to come here. So you're worried about still being recognised as, and people thinking you're guilty? Yeah. Post mail items. More than 700 post office workers were wrongly prosecuted in what became known as the Horizon IT scandal. A fault in the post office accounting software, called Horizon, identified cash shortfalls that didn't exist. Thousands were hounded for money that hadn't gone missing. Many went bankrupt, some went to prison, and a few took their own lives. A statutory inquiry into the Horizon scandal was first called for more than 10 years ago. It finally began here last month, and it aims to establish exactly what went wrong, how this happened, because despite the scale of the suffering, no one has been held accountable. Declare and affirm. Declare and affirm. Tracy was just 19 when she went to prison after being wrongly convicted of theft. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. I tried to kill myself. Was that because you'd been charged with a criminal offence you hadn't committed? Yes, it was. I couldn't defend myself, I couldn't... I couldn't explain what had happened. 20 years on, the suicidal thoughts continue, as does the intense therapy. It's made me the person I am today, but not the person that I want to be. Um, I don't want to be that girl that's scared of noises, that's scared to close the door, or that has a breakdown sort of every other month because something triggers a reaction or triggers a memory that causes my mental health to, to break down. Tracy's among 72 people who have had their convictions quashed so far. But the elation is brief, the trauma is permanent. 
In her evidence, Tracy recounted how her teenage son said he's glad he doesn't share her surname so friends won't make the connection. It killed me because I thought, actually, my son believed that it was better to not have the same surname as me. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it totally ripped my heart out. The problems with Horizon weren't confined to one area. They affected branches all over the country. And yet throughout these hearings, in London, Cardiff and here in Leeds, witnesses have said that when they called the post office for help, none was given. And instead, they all say they were told, you're the only one having these issues. We wrote letters on a very frequent basis for the area manager's office. Baljit Sethi is among the thousands who called the helpline, in his case 135 times, when shortfalls appeared at his branch in Brentwood. They didn't want to know. They didn't even come once to have a look. When it rose to 17,000, they said, well, make this money good. That means put in the 17,000 and we will be terminating your contract. Yet another one. That was in 2002. By then, Baljit and his wife Anjana had been running another branch nearby for nearly 20 years. We did not let them take a single penny. We put our lives at risk. They'd also earned multiple certificates of bravery for defending it against armed robberies. This stand for nothing now. The Sethis were suspended and forced into bankruptcy. Only my wife and I know it. How we have struggled in these 20 years. We have worked so many hours for a petty amount of money. Despite his law degree, the only job Baljit could get was as a nighttime security guard. I'm so bitter, I'm so annoyed that why did this have to happen? It would have never happened. So of course somebody should take the brunt of it and be punished for it. This happened from top to the bottom. I'm not saying I was one person responsible. I blame everybody in the post office. Being shunned by friends and former customers has been another common theme in the witness testimonies. These are people whose job made them central pillars of their villages and their communities, only to be torn down to the point where many were afraid to go out. That's the farmhouse that I grew up in. That was Tim Brentnell took over the post office in Roach in Pembrokeshire so he could stay in the village where he grew up. After his conviction in 2010, it was people he had known all his life who were turning their backs. How did people here react to your conviction? That I was a fraudster, I was a thief, I'd stolen from, from the old ladies in the village. People saying things to my face was easier to handle than, say, walking into the pub and you could hear whispers of, oh, there's the, the guy that's stolen the money from the post office. Uh, and when you turn around and say, sorry, well, yeah, oh, no, 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 we didn't. And you just thought, that's what made me withdraw from, from social sides. It's been a long time since it happened. And I don't think, I can't see how I can ever get back to that um, excited young man that I was. They, they also wanted to... Tim still runs the village shop, mainly because no one will buy it. In Ashford. Business has dwindled by 80% since his conviction, and he feels financially stuck. Desperate to look to the future, but unable to escape the past, and forced to confront the post office on a daily basis. Sometimes it's really hard, because some people still might come in when I'm here on the retail side and expect me to be able to serve them. What do you say? I have to say, no, I can't. I'm not allowed, not allowed to do the post office. It's, it's nothing to do with me anymore. How does that make you feel? That's horrific. It's just, it's a constant reminder of what happened. Those who had convictions overturned have finally begun to be compensated, but no amount of money can make up for what many went through. Elder son kept Dave alive and the youngest one kept me alive. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't have been here. The things we have gone through. Seema Misra was sent to prison on her son's 10th birthday, while eight weeks pregnant with her second child. Oh my God, it was terrible. Uh, I never thought I'm gonna come out alive from here. It was like, 
you know, if I wouldn't been pregnant, I would have killed myself. That's for sure. Like it was like I brought me for me, it was like I brought a shame to my family. And I was so worried about my baby's health because people were self farming there. People were like on the drugs there. I thought like any anything is possible in this country. I thought somebody who might will come and just stab me. Seema was released after four months, so gave birth to Jairaj outside prison, but then locked herself away for years. I haven't taken him to any play groups or anything, you know, just we just stayed in I, for eight years, bless him, like we didn't celebrate his birthday because I didn't want it other his his uh, friends and fa uh, their parents to know that I'm their mum. I wasn't saying my full name. If somebody asked me what was my name, I said Seema. I never used to see my mistress. I said, what if they Google it? To cover supposed shortfalls of £75,000, the family was stripped of their assets. Seema's husband, Davinda, was attacked in the street and became an alcoholic. The sense of injustice is still overwhelming. The way they crush our family, the way they crush our happiness, the way they crush our health, our wealth, our mind, our peace of mind, they would lose the time we're supposed to enjoy, you know, as a young couple. Take all their money out, all their wealth out, and spend that wealth between people like us. That's called justice. In a statement, the post office said it's sincerely sorry for the impact of the Horizon scandal on the lives of victims and their families and we are in no doubt about the human cost. The inquiry's hearings enable many of those who were most deeply affected by post office's past failings to voice their experiences, and their testimonies must and will ensure all lessons are learned so that such events can never happen again. The next phases of this inquiry will focus on the Horizon software, which was run by Fujitsu, and on who knew what within the post office. Former CEO Paula Venels may be asked to give evidence. She ran the company between 2012 and 2019 and was awarded a CBE for her services to the post office. When contacted by Sky News, her legal team declined to comment. But this first phase has been about the victims. People are getting to listen to the real life stories. Ignored for so long, they're finally being listened to. I want them to sit here and feel what we feel. But there's still a long way to go for them to get justice. Ivor Bennett, Sky News.